Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. You're I, fine? I'm not. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm not sure about you. Okay. But, I'm not you in know. the best mood. have a bit of a headache. So Yeah. Let's have some fun, people. We were just debating whether to do this, and we finally <laughs> said, yep, click, go. Yeah. Get it over <laughs> So <with. laughs> we make no promises on this one. Um, I'm Danny. And I'm John. And this is still watching my stories. We're working yeah. on changing the title, actually, everyone. Yeah, we, um, we think it's going to change. Yeah. But um, anyway, okay. So... I have a couple movies, I have a few TV shows, um, and then we're doing something a little different with the Actors Corner, and I actually think we're both <laughs> doing different things, because <laughs> I was confused on what we were supposed to be doing. I threw out an idea this morning, and she said, yeah, that sounds good. Well, And then I, we tore off in different directions yeah. and did something completely okay. different. So. so everyone knows the last few weeks, what we've basically been doing is blind, <laughs> going through the movie channels, and just landing on something, and then picking someone from that cast, and that's who we do. Today, we land on Too Fast, Too Furious. And he hasn't... I mean, have you seen more than the first one? No. Yeah. So I was like, I know you... And, and the people in it... I know you haven't seen them in anything more. So I was like, well, let's just do it again. And you had this idea of let's just what I thought I heard was <laughs> let's take the cast and we'll just talk about the cast and our favorite movies that they've ever been in. That's what I thought you had said. But you ended up doing something different. So we're going to kind of have a different thing here, but it should still be fun. Yeah, I think we're going to be OK. Yeah, we might have done it slightly differently, but I don't think it's going to be you know like there's no wrong answer yeah i mean right? stay tuned for paul walker admiration that's all i'm gonna say well yeah that was predictable but um okay so we're gonna jump in mm -hmm. happy november just wanted to say that well thank you <laughs> today's my dad's birthday happy birthday dad dad <laughs> oh no it's your dad's birthday it's my dad's birthday yeah okay that sounded that sounded funny why it, it sounded like you said my ass birthday that's oh. what it. That's what I heard. Okay. That's why I did the double take on the cough because I was like, okay, caught slightly off guard. It's my dad's birthday. Yes, it is. And okay. We talked to him and wished him a happy birthday. Happy yes. birthday, Randy. Yes, happy birthday. Okay. First movie I saw yesterday was Last Christmas. Mm -hmm. This is the movie that I'm sure everyone has seen the million commercials to. Um, starring Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones and Henry Golding from yeah. Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Um, written by Emma Thompson, who's also in it, and based off of the George Michael song Last Christmas. Um, and sh Emma Thompson actually had this idea with her husband years ago, uh, spoke to George Michael about the idea and got his approval to use the song and all of his songs. The whole soundtrack is his music. Cool. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know how to... There's a huge twist even though i told you weeks ago i already knew what the twist was was it was it that uh yeah okay um but with more information i mean there's a point to it um so there is a huge twist so i'm not going to give all of that away um so i'm going to talk about it this way there are two ways to look at this movie you can go into it wanting to like that <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, no, no this faces. This is not visual. This, this is, is not a visual medium. Oh damn it! People We're not can't doing video. See you. Uh, I'm They'll making see faces you. that are like I look at it this way. <laughs> Sound okay. effects for podcast. Yes. Continue. So you can go into it expecting a movie that can be picked apart, and you know all of that. I can pick this movie apart and say, "Hey, it really was kind of pointless. It rushes to its ending. Um, it didn't give me enough of." xyz i can say all of that about this movie but i'm choosing to look at it on the other <laughs> side of it's a christmas movie yep it's um it is a love story okay in a different way maybe not romantic love but a love story and um and a feel-good movie especially a christmas feel-good movie that's what i'm choosing to take away from it i was sitting there i was finding myself picking it apart and I thought, I don't want to do this to this movie. And so I think I'm just going to give you that biased 
process of I'm just choosing to love it. Okay. One, Henry Golding, you know. He's already one of our favorites. Yeah, I I've mean. I've only seen him in two things. He's only done two things <clears throat> that have been released. I've seen his entire career. You have. Well, now you haven't because of this. And then he's got that gentleman movie with McConaughey and everyone else <laughs> in the world coming yeah. up. Yeah. Um, so um, love him. Still can do no wrong. Um, all he has to do is smile and I'm just going to sit there and be sure. happy. Uh -huh. um, Amelia Clark. I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I saw her in another movie, the romantic comedy, or it wasn't comedy, uh, movie, and she was adorable in it. But in this, she is so adorable. You are going to fall in love with her. Really? Oh, my gosh. She is just adorable. Because I've never seen her in anything other than the trailer for this movie. I've, oh. I've, I've obviously never watched Game of Thrones. And right. I don't recall seeing her in anything other than you know, right. the commercials. So um, Yeah, she's just pretty fantastic okay and she sings in this and she's lovely and wonderful and you want the best for her okay um so that made it really easy to watch michelle yo is in it she's actually really funny really funny yeah um paul feig directed this so between emma thompson's funny words and paul feig's kind of sense of style and his visual and he always gets the funny from people mm -hmm. um it it just it all of that worked. Sure. And it's set in London at Christmas, which is my dream. <clears throat> I cannot wait to spend Christmas in London. That's at the top of your bucket list. It is. Okay. That is the first thing we are doing when we are available to travel. Okay. So um it's just it's just breathtaking. No one celebrates Christmas better than them. Um hmm. so so all of that combined makes it wonderful. Emma Thompson plays Amelia Clark's mom. She's actually um, Yugo from the former Yugoslavia, so sh so there's a, there's a family dynamic there. Um, Amelia Clark's um, Katarina is her character's name. She had been sick, and um, she's basically coming out of that kind of sickness, mm -hmm. and in that funk that happens after that you know what am gotcha. i you know she's kind of like thinking she's living by going out every night and sleeping with another guy and getting drunk so she wants to live that life but she's not really living a life you know what i mean a meaningful uh, life i'll take your word for it i've never gone out every night and slept with <laughs> every guy but yeah so anyway it turns into that here's what i also loved about the movie i can say that was i a george michael fan 80s and 90s sure have i ever been like He's the greatest and the mu music is the greatest. No. And I can honestly tell you, Last Christmas is one of my least favorite Christmas songs. It annoys the poop out of me. Mm -hmm. But not anymore. Really? First off, the music in this movie worked so well. And there were some songs I hadn't heard in a long time. Mm -hmm. And hearing his voice kind of as pure as in a movie theater, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and how almost prolific some of this music was because it was set to really poignant scenes. Mm -hmm. um, it it opened up a whole new, a completely new respect you have a for George Michael and for the music it. he wrote. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always known he had a really good voice, but again, hearing it in the setting was just kind of wonderful. Um, Amelia Clark sings last Christmas. And, uh, and again, that kind of changed my viewpoint on that that song so she can sing too yes of course she can sing too okay um so yeah so again if you're a george michael fan oh my gosh you're gonna be so in love because oh my gosh it really felt like um it just was really nice it was it was really nice to to have a compilation from an artist like this where it wasn't a biopic yeah yeah, yeah. we've had that we bombarded the last couple of years. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was, it was lovely. Good. That idea. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I can say some negative stuff about it. Like I said, it, it rushed to the ending. It felt like there wasn't enough development of certain characters that I wanted more of, but I'm going to look past it and I'm just going to enjoy it. And this will become a Christmas staple for me to watch. Okay. Over. Well, this is going to be something that I'm going to watch all year long because of Henry Golding. So sure. there's no question about that. Um, but will everyone really come out loving it? Oh, well, actually, I'll tell you. I was going down the escalator after getting out of the movie theater 
and it was that awkward i was like walking side by side with another woman Mm -hmm. and so it was like we got to the escalator and i was like you go no you go you know so she got on the escalator before me and she was putting on her sunglasses and so was i and she's like oh my gosh she goes that was so good and i said yeah it was and she goes i cried like five or six times i was not expecting to cry and i said Uh i know she goes yeah i had to put my glasses on she goes oh but i just she goes i really didn't think i was gonna like it as much as i did it was better than i ever thought Uh and i said good i'm glad and and i said i love him and she goes yeah she goes and she was so good she was you know she was really good you know and so it was like immediately after i think there are some people who are really gonna love it who aren't gonna pick it apart like i would obviously Mm -hmm. um but i think there could be some rom-com people because they've been kind of touting it as this christmas Mm rom-com it's not that not in my opinion um so i think some people could come out of it going that's not what i was sold okay so we'll see okay so question Mm -hmm. michelle yo does she play henry golding's mother no Oh, okay. She is um she is Amelia Clark's employer. She owns a Christmas store that's okay. open all year long. Okay. Um, but she's funny. Really oh, funny. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I was just thinking that They boy, never have any scenes together actually. Her and Henry? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. I was just thinking because eh, of crazy rich yeah. Asians. It would have been too much if it, they had you know, it'd be kinda like, Okay, is she gonna play your mother in every movie? <laughs> right, right. You know, that's that's too much. Right. But good. I'm glad she uh Yeah. Got her and own and actually, there's a lot of cameos of uh, English people, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of little small, um, uh, you know, if you watch a lot of English shows or, you know, like Mel is in it from Bake Off. Oh, OK. Um, so it, every little um, every time there's a scene where someone you can tell is just in it for that scene pay attention to them they're someone Uh people might not recognize them here right but it was really cool to see that paul feig kind of went through england and took their funny people sure and stuck them in these little cameos it was really fun to see cool so yeah and there's a whole thing with the homeless homeless um shelter which is really lovely um i meant to look up actually if all of those people were actors or what but um you know george michael did a lot of work with yeah, the yeah, homeless so yeah. that i think was a huge nod to him and um yeah it was just it was lovely Good. it was lovely Good. yeah i'm glad you liked it yeah we we um, had our doubts when you were going to it but i mean you thought you'd like it but you weren't sure yeah yeah you never know so <laughs> i'm proud of you for not picking it apart i'm yeah i'm just because i just love everyone in it and like i said you heard my negatives that could stop you from going to see it. But I think you'll really enjoy it. And I think uh, most people, um, I think most people will appreciate it, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so. Okay. All right. Next movie I'm going to talk about is <clears throat> one from Netflix called American Sun. I'm going to try not to get into a huge conversation about this. Um, this was a play on Broadway last year, or earlier this year, I forget, written by Christopher Demos Brown. Um, and the on Broadway and in the movie, it stars Kerry Washington, Stephen Pascal, and Jeremy Jordan. Mm-hmm. So they took this show and turned it into a film, which I'm so glad they did because I was so upset I couldn't see it last year on Broadway. Um, so here's what I'm going to say about American Sun. Um, just stop listening right now and go to Netflix and watch it. Okay. And everyone... And I would say everyone with teenagers and let's see who else. (laughs) Um, It's so the premise is Carrie Washington is in a police station in the middle of the night uh, looking for her son. Her son did not come home the night before. Um, And Jeremy Jordan is the police officer that is, you know, one of the few people on duty in the middle of the night. Um, So she's a, appealing to him to help find her son and Stephen pascal is her husband who they are currently at that moment separated and he shows up obviously to help and try and find his son uh their son um so it is that's that's the premise it all takes place in this waiting room in the police station Mm -hmm. um they they walk through um all kinds of topics but everything is racial as far as you know 
she is a black woman speaking to a white police officer about what he presumes at first to be a black son named Jamal. Um, when Stephen Pascal walks in, he mistakes him for another police officer, but he is the father of Jamal. So then it starts to complicate things. Um, but here's the thing. It's so amazingly written to the human black experience in this country. And I know that sounds really weird for me to say that as a white chick, but I know that because many black people in entertainment got behind this play and, and they put money into it to get it made. And uh, it's written by a white man, which is very remarkable. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not just saying that as my opinion. I'm actually saying that based off of listening to other african-american or black people who have seen this show um and it's so carrie washington has many many amazing moments speaking to to understanding how she has to live in this country how her son has to live and look they rate the there's so much about class um because they raised him with this white father who's an fbi agent raised him in a pub in a private school where there weren't other black children and now he was kind of at 18 was kind of trying to discover his black side Mm -hmm. for lack of a better term and was experiencing things differently in the world as he was finding himself and so all of this leads to how she's freaking out because he hasn't come home and Mm -hmm. the cop can only say there was an incident with the car And that's all they're telling her. And Mm -hmm. so for a woman knowing that there's this black child out there, any incident with that involves the police could be anything. Um, And, uh, and there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot that comes from it, not just um, from their side, but there is another black cop that comes in and he has a really amazing conversation with her. Um, and and it, you find yourself agreeing with both sides. You know, he's saying you raised your son to be proud of who he is and to not bow to anyone. And that's wrong. You know, this 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 other black cop is saying you should have taught him. He needs to put his hands on the wheel and, you know, not talk back to police officers and, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like what what everyone is taught in the talk that black families in this country have to have is to behave and not run and do all that crap. And she's countering, you know, and so when he's talking, you sit there and you go, you're right, you're right. That's what he should be doing. But then she kind of, she's like, why should he? You know, and then you go, you're right. Why should he? I don't Mm -hmm. have to do that. Why should he have to do, you know, so it's like you, you find yourself going to so many places and here and even then there's conversations between her and Stephen Pascal, who as a white man raised this child of color he's seen to the world as a person of color so but he didn't he doesn't even understand the plight of that and so he never raised him anything other than what he wanted out of his child you know and so just i mean the layers and layers and layers of of conversation and and where you go within yourself as you're listening to this Mm -hmm. and and i will tell you i think i sobbed by the end after it had ended i don't even know how long it it, i couldn't stop myself Mm -hmm. so um it will uh i'm gonna cry now just (coughs) thinking of it um it will get you um but it is worth the journey because it is something that will create conversations and I want you to see it. I know you don't like anything that's tense. <laughs> I don't. And but... um but it is so important to to watch because the conversations that can yeah. come from this is so important. And it's really more about us white people having these conversations. They know what's going on. They understand what they have to deal well, with. We're the ones that have yeah, to have the conversations. I, I think it's well known and it's it's out in the public. It's the public conversation of the the situation is not going to get better unless white people, you know, start helping. Right, exactly. Right? And and you know, you talking about it the other day had already pretty much convinced me to to see it. Yeah. 
Um, Even if we have to watch like a half hour at a time again, I think I'm, it's only 90 minutes. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I'm not exactly looking forward to it, but I think I, I kind of... It's so intelligent. Uh, I feel like I, I need to. Yes. And then that's right. what I'm saying is everyone needs to. This isn't something this should be shown in every high school. It really should because it brings up so many different sides of things. Mm-hmm. You know, like it comes out that the kid had put a bumper sticker on his car <clears throat> that said, shoot cops in big letters. And then underneath in small letters said, with your camera phone when you see blah, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. So that becomes a thing. Well, now he deserved to get pulled over because he had this on him. And, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like, no, he doesn't. And she brings up, I was in Atlanta. I saw a person with a a bumper sticker on their car that said, don't blame me. I voted for Jefferson Davis. Mm -hmm. And she said, how come that person doesn't get pulled over? You know, Mm -hmm. in Atlanta, where it is primarily black people, how is that person allowed to have that? But no one thinks about that other side. And he even said, Stephen Pascal even says something like, well, that's just a racist idiot blah 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 and it's like yeah why do we allow one side of things and not the other and again it's because of who's doing it right i mean it is white people who get away with Mm -hmm. being racist when people who are standing up for themselves can't you know it's so i could go on and on i mean i honestly could have a whole hour on this alone but it's Mm -hmm. pointless until you've seen it it's pointless until more and more people have seen it so please the the act Carrie Washington oh my god if she does not get nominated for a million things for this she is perfect in this I mean and and Jeremy Jordan who you and I love yeah more than anything yeah. it's so hard because he he's almost um I don't want to say every person he's definitely not he's more on the racist side but he um he's representing police in a way that at least for me I feel police have that attitude that you see portrayed all the time um Uh, no that i think in real life in the news i meant sure yeah Yeah. so um anyway it's really everyone should see it it's compelling it's Mm -hmm. entertaining in a really horrible way that that word means but it is you you can't stop um and uh and then have tissues Okay. Um, okay for sure but um fair enough you know please everyone go see it and 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 talk and have lots and lots of conversation tell people at work to see it mm-hmm. all of that yeah. okay it's on netflix american sun okay okay moving on another documentary i watched on netflix is called tell me who i am this is about a set of twins in england alex and marcus and when alex was an I forgot, but I think he was 18. He got into a motorcycle accident and and woke up with amnesia. And the only person he recognized in the hospital room was his twin brother, Marcus. And he didn't recognize his parents. He didn't. He knew nothing of his life. So go home. They go home to, you know, the family home. He has no clue about anything. But he knows his twin brother. Like, instinctively, he knew his twin brother. So... He he didn't. So he knew that it was his twin brother, or he knew things about him, and that's all he, he was remembering. Just, no, he he didn't remember anything about him. He just instinctively knew. Like he says, he looked around the room. He didn't know anyone, and he he landed upon his brother, and he just said he knew that was his brother, and so okay. that was the only person he would trust. Like as everyone else was like, "Who am I? Who am I?" He would keep looking at his brother. Who's that person? Like he trusted his brother. And just knew instinctively. Mm-hmm. So they go home and his parents were not great parents and weren't really like buying into the Alzheimer's or amnesia thing. And just, uh, you know, so his brother Marcus was all he had to kind of fill in blanks. Mm-hmm. So Marcus started um, telling him about his their their lives. And, um, you know, Alex would say, did we go on vacation? And he would show him a picture of them on a beach and say, yeah, we would go all that sort of stuff. He also didn't know food. So Marcus would have to tell him which food he had and all this stuff. They would go to parties with friends. And before they went inside, Marcus would kind of say, okay, the person with this is that person. The person with this, your girlfriend is this person, you know, like, so they would, and they started just this whole thing where, um, you know, Marcus was telling Alex everything. So he basically retaught him his life. He's telling him all these stories about their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, 
asking about the parents, you know, what's up with the parents. And he's like, oh, well, the father, you know, he's very strict. Just call him sir and don't bother him and, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, time goes on, 20 years or whatever it is, and the parents die. And they're Mm -hmm. going in to clean out. They have this huge, like, English estate. And they're cleaning all the stuff out. And Alex comes across different things in the house, like a a cabinet. Like, there were parts of the house they were not allowed to go to. Mm -hmm. Um, And actually, at this point, when the accident happened, the boys were sleeping outside, like, in a shed or something. Like, they did not and they did not have keys to the house the mother would not give them keys to the house but all these things you know whatever right okay so they come across like a in the as they're cleaning out the house now um he comes across the whole closet that's full of sex toys and then they you know alex keeps going around and marcus isn't saying much and alex keeps finding things that he's questioning and and finally he comes upon a lock within a lock within a lock of a box and the only thing in it is a picture of the two boys as young children naked with their heads cut off and alex brings it to marcus and he's like what is this you know and and marcus just kind of dismisses him at first and whatever and then finally alex puts things together and he comes to marcus and he's like did did mom molest us you know, or was mom doing something wrong with us or whatever. And Marcus just said, yes. And left it at that for years and years and years, still refusing to ever tell Alex anything. So the point of this documentary is that, yes, the mother had molested them from young, young children until they were 14, had passed them off to people for other men and other people to rape them as well. And had lived this horrible, horrible life. And when his twin brother got amnesia, he decided to invent, I'm going to cry. He decided to invent an entirely wonderful family story that he told his brother, which in a way is beautiful because he didn't want his brother to live through the pain and live through knowing what they had actually gone through. At the same time, though, Alex is like, I... I don't, I still don't know who I am. You told me all these stories that weren't true. Mm -hmm. And I've built kind of my life on this whole thing that I didn't know. And so in this documentary, um, Marcus had been unwilling to still ever tell him anything. And the two came together and they, the thing was they like lived together. They worked together. Like they, they both got married and had kids and had a business together. So they were seeing each other all the time, Mm -hmm. but Marcus still would never tell him exactly what was going on. He had only answered yes to that question and had left it at that. And so finally in the movie, Alex broke down and said, I need to know. And Marcus said, I can't tell you face to face. And so he went off and he recorded to the camera his, that story of how long it had happened. The other men that the mother had, given them off to to be raped and all of the stuff that had happened and so we see alex watching this video and we see everything and they come together afterwards and um and you can just you know marcus is devastated that the secret has come out and that he's told this to him and you're kind of left with did alex do the right thing of, or did marcus do the right thing of making up the story you know, what would you have done? You know, does misery love company? Would you, would you have made sure that he knew so that you could both commiserate together or would you have made like, they never went on vacations. They never, like he would, when he would be asked questions, he would have to go and find a picture that maybe could look like it was a vacation, you know? And like Mm -hmm. he literally was making up anything about the family um, just so that his brother didn't have to live with that horrible knowledge. I I think that's a, (laughs) <laughs> boy <laughs> first of all some of the shit you watch second of all <laughs> i mean all, all the light and happy and entertaining stuff out there and you just man in your murder shows but that <laughs> i digress so i would like to think so personally i think that's the way to go if the person has no recollection of right. anything bad that's ever happened to them right don't ruin it. But at eight, you know, imagine the forethought that he had or the, the presence he had at 18 to say, I get to make up this whole thing for him and he doesn't have to suffer. Yeah. You know, well, like that's a really amazing mindset to have. When whatever happened to his brother happened and he had a, a chunk of time to think about it. Right. And then he knows that, you know, if he has amnesia or whatever, 
I would pr- I would love it if somebody did this for me. If I'm going to do this for <laughs> right. him, you know, that's right. coming from right. him, right? Yeah. If I had the chance, I'd like to not know any of this exactly. stuff. Exactly, exactly. So that's what I'm going to do. Right. And I think that's kind of beautiful. I think so too. Um, I wouldn't, yeah, uh, why, in, in, in my opinion, the truth would have ruined it. And I understand, so if, if the, if Alex, I think I have these yeah. names right, if Alex is so uh, wanting to know the truth mm-hmm. that he won't leave it alone, okay, it's on him right. if, for, if Marcus tells it to him. But to me, if I have, if, if my, if I was in that situation, my brother answered yes to that question. I don't know that I would pursue it. Right. I don't know either. I think, I think the reason, I mean, he gives a lot of reasons. It's a really good, it's a really good documentary to watch. And obviously it, it dives in a lot deeper, but, um, but it makes sense. You know, people are always just looking for answers and who you are and i don't i don't know that he even felt like he needed to know that because of who he was i think he felt like he needed to know it because almost the same reason that marcus made up the stories was that alex was like he shouldn't have to have this himself you know he should it happened to both of us i should take some of that on myself you know what i mean but even though he never can because he doesn't actually have the memories Um, but but logically, you have to Alex. You have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> if 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 that's what your goal is, even you taking that on, getting the truth out of Marcus and trying to take it on, isn't going to help Marcus at all. Yeah, now he has somebody to commiserate with, who's who has empathy. I think you can have that empathy. You know, just work at having the empathy without knowing the truth. Just say, Marcus, look, I I I understand things were terrible for you, and I'm sorry I don't remember it, and and all this stuff, please just let me help you in any way I can without without yeah. ne- knowing anything, but just, you know, if you ever need to talk or you ever need to whatever, yeah, let it come out then or that way yeah. instead of... I think, you know, everyone handles everything in their own way, and I think this was a really, really interesting, because they're like in their 50s now, and um, I just think it's remarkable to watch, and in a way, it's yeah. a very remarkable story because of everyone involved every the the way th- it's just it, it's it's very interesting and yeah. totally worth watching and it's such a sad story i mean you know you see things like this or you hear about or you watch them and you 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 know you have to think to yourself how lucky are we how lucky am i sure because so many people go through you know it, it's this isn't probably an isolated event right. as, as weird and odd as it sounds it's probably happened before, some variation of it. Right. People people are in you know, kept locked up in cages in their own homes for ten years. Right. And things like that. And it's like how can how can these things go on in the in the world and how lucky am I that I've never experienced anything right. approaching this? Right. You know? Right. So you know, for, for those of us that have a you know, a lot of empathy well, yeah, <laughs> for and, the world. And again, I think I think it is a beautiful thing for a brother to do oh to shield him from it 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 really just it's yeah it's really so it's worth watching it's called tell me who i am on netflix um and and again it does lead to conversation this also leads to conversations what would you do what would you do if later it came out you know like there's there are things to talk about and it is just um it is fascinating Mm -hmm. um and we and i hope i really hope marcus gets help for it because he had never told anyone anything and so you really have to imagine now he will go and and it doesn't seem like it's impacted his life but you never know that until you actually start working through things and you go, oh, that's why I don't do X, Y, Z, you know? How can it not? Right. Of I course mean, it has. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So Jesus. wishing wishing them the best for sure. Um, okay. Now moving on to TV. First series I'm going to talk about is Jack Ryan. The second season came out on Amazon Prime. Um, eight episodes, each an hour episode. Um, I did not enjoy the second season as much as the first season. Um, but... <clears throat> You know, John Krasinski is my dream husband. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I know that and I'm okay with that. So I will watch anything he's doing. And, um, you know, it was 
it's still this one was based it was set in venezuela it was more about the corruption in venezuela um which was interesting uh but it didn't feel as exciting as the first season did and that's okay um he's still super smart still good at everything he does um you know in in a way that's probably good because a lot of these shows to maintain that level or they know they have to amp it up if they're trying to get to the same level of excitement because it's a you know it's it's a second season you know the characters you know what happens right a lot of times to do that they have to get crazy right, right. just to get that same level of you just have to keep upping and upping and upping yeah it. and it it's kind of nice when the show doesn't do that right even though it may not be as exciting it still maintains a level of believability or yeah you know not not being outlandish or whatever like yeah homeland i think is the one that comes to mind where you know the first season i thought was really good and then they it ended yeah they didn't have any ideas after the first season well right yeah it's this one um still had a good idea but to me the way it was presented like because there's so many players and so in the beginning we're seeing all these this other people that we haven't been told how they're going to integrate in the story yet. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself going, I need to know why I need to be watching these people. Cause otherwise you could just be wasting my time, you know? So I find that until we get integrated and then I go, Oh, okay. So now I care about them or whatever. It's it's, for me, that's a little hard for me to follow. And sometimes I'm just like, wait, who's that guy mad at like yeah. why is he mad at the so numi repass is in this one repace whatever her name is the girl with the dragon tattoo uh-huh. so she's in it and there's a couple other people that were good that came in and when i still say wendell pierce you think it's wendell we never got confirmation um of oh, course I, he's back in it i just talked to him i forgot to ask him oh okay ask, ask damn him. it you so you just don't address him <laughs> i'm like dude oh okay dude what, pierce what's up fella um so anyway i love it i hope there's a third season because i just get eight hours of john krasinski so it's all yeah. that i need well yeah and there's gonna be a third season i hope so i mean it's already hugely downloaded so i have no clue yeah i heard that it was like one of the bigger shows oh, okay. in a while so okay yeah it's gonna be you know i i predict there's gonna be a third season okay <clears throat> i think it's definitely worth checking out because again it is only eight hours if you didn't watch the first season, I would definitely start the first season. I just have to say, you know, listening to you talk about it again reminded me that I think you're watching these shows wrong. I, I just got to say, because, you know, it you you if you just let things happen instead of seeing this person over here and thinking, should I care about them? How much should I care about them? All this. Don't think about it. Just let Here's stuff the happen. Reason. I've been burned by shows and we're going to talk about one in a little bit where they're showing me offshoot characters and then that person didn't matter whatsoever. And I'm like, screw you for wasting my time. So I have been burned <laughs> by pe- by shows wasting my time with people. So that is why I worry about it. But that's it. real life. Sometimes people come no, into your life. No for... one wastes my time. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I you was, see everything I have to watch? I, I can't was, have wasted time. I was pre-instructed to not piss you off. So I'm yes, going to stop. We're done. Okay. Anyway, Jack Ryan, Amazon Prime. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Next show. Okay. The Kaminsky Method on Netflix. We got the second season again. This is eight episodes, but they're half hour episodes, so it goes really fast. If you guys remember from last year, I wasn't a huge fan of the first season. I I, I liked it. I felt like I saw it for what it was, which to me was the answer to Grace and Frankie, which wasn't as good. I felt like it was definitely Alan Arkin's vehicle. Um, of course, Michael Douglas won the award, but I wanted Alan Markin to, to win it. Um, but this second season was really good. I really enjoyed the second season. Okay. I don't know if it's just because of that. Like maybe I shook all that off and I was like, screw it. I'm just going to watch it. Or I honestly think it was funnier. I think it was more interesting. Mm-hmm. I feel like the first season they might've been trying too hard. I mean, it's Chuck Lorre. I felt like... I feel like the first season was definitely like, I'm going to make this all about men issues. And that's what they did. It felt like it was very much just watching these two old men talk about what it's like to be old men. Mm -hmm. The second season, there was a lot more going on that didn't have to do with them. And so it was much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. My only complaint is one of my crushes of all time is Paul Reiser. And they made him look so old and horrible. They balded him with a long ponytail. And it just... It sucked so bad because I don't want to 
look at him that way. But sure. but his character is really funny. And he's dating Michael Douglas's daughter, which is just a lot of fun. Um, Alan Arkin, again, wonderful. Jane Seymour came in. They started dating. Um, it, it, it was it was a very, very enjoyable season. I really liked what they've done with the characters. I, I hope there's a third season now because... I really want to see what happens next. Okay. Um, it was and it was funny. I actually laughed quite a bit in the second season. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, good. Um, Kaminsky Method second season on Netflix. Definitely watch the first. You have to watch the first season to to learn who everyone is. But okay, um, I enjoyed the second. All right. Okay. I'm going to talk about three shows now on Apple TV since Apple TV Plus came out. Um, all of these, obviously I haven't seen the whole season cause they aren't releasing the whole season, but I just want to talk about them quickly. Um, I'm going to do the morning show last just because that's, I think the biggest show everyone's talking about first. Um, I only watched the first episode of for all mankind. This is a show. Joel Kin- Kinnaman is on it. It's a, what if show, uh, what if the Russians had beat us to the moon? Mm-hmm. Um, the first episode was all about that. Like it opens up you think we're the ones landing on the moon and then turns out it's the Russians and what is, how does NASA respond? And then us finally getting to the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I love this subject matter, I was really bored. Hmm. So I have not gone on to watch the episodes after that. Hmm. I hope to. Okay. But I don't know when that's going to be. So I've been thinking about giving the show a chance. Um, because <laughs> of course. Be, well because of the subject matter yeah right i'm fascinated with space and space travel mm-hmm. um so i've been thinking about it so maybe i'll watch it and see if i can yeah if see you how it strikes it. me and if i feel compelled maybe i can convince you to yeah you know, it was fun me. again to see like the <clears throat> astronauts and they all get in their corvettes and they race down the street something you have to do every time you're talking about astronauts and um and i love joel kinnaman i will watch him in anything but um i was not compelled to keep watching after that i Mm -hmm. do think i want to give it a couple more episodes but we'll see so yeah let me know if you do get into it okay uh the next show is called dickinson this stars harley uh, steinfeld who is uh playing emily dickinson so this is a little bit of a twisty show where visually it looks like it's set back in her time the clothes the the house all of that um but they speak contemporary so she speaks just like i'm speaking right now um and all of the music is contemporary a lot of rap music a lot of um and even they have a party and at first they're all kind of doing like their little you know 18th century waltz or whatever and then they all start twerking and doing all that (laughs) stuff so um it's so it's interesting um it's definitely a different approach but i think it definitely makes it more relatable Mm -hmm. um and and they're kind of putting the twist on emily dickinson that she was in a love affair with her sister-in-law which of course i had to stop and look up everything i could about emily dickinson to see how how real they were being um it is it is it has been questioned as to whether or not that happened so emily dickinson barely left her house um and in the last years of her life barely left her room um assuming agoraphobic but she wrote lots and lots of letters more letters than most people have ever seen and a lot of them were to her sister-in-law and a lot of them did infer some form of love but you know is that just how she wrote or not um all of her poems were not discovered until after she had died um so anyway it's i've i've watched i think four episodes of this it's entertaining Mm -hmm. um it's a good uh jane krakowski plays her mother um it's entertaining i just haven't gotten back to it because i have had so much else to watch but Mm -hmm. i think i probably will finish this um but it is so dickinson on on apple plus tv and it's a drama um it's oh they're half hour episodes too by the way um okay it's it's neither right now it's just it's It's just a show it's um yeah it's not a comedy it's not a drama okay because you said jane krakowski and instantly i think comedy oh yeah no okay i mean there are funny bits and you know okay um okay so now the the biggest show on apple plus tv right now that everyone knows about is the morning show with jennifer aniston reese witherspoon uh mark platt um billy crudup uh 
who else is on there? Everyone, like everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so there have been four episodes released so far. They are our episodes. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it right now because I have picked it apart. I have a lot of negative things to say about it, but I want to give it the season to work itself out. Okay. So I'm just going to say that now. This fourth episode that came out yesterday was a lot more entertaining than the first three. Oh, Steve Carell. Duh. Yeah, I was, I was going to say. Yeah, that. who's not based on Matt Lauer, but it's totally based on Matt Lauer. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I, uh, I'm definitely watching the rest of it because, again, the cast is so good. Here's the first thing I'm just going to say negative-wise because it's hard to get past any show like this that I've loved has been an Aaron Sorkin show, whether it was the newsroom or sports night or West wing, you kind it's, it's that vein, you know, it mm-hmm. is that kind of workplace drama, even studio 60. So we, ex- so it looks like that sort of show. Mm-hmm. So my brain wants really intelligent <laughs> characters and really intelligent dialogue Mm -hmm. and that's not happening so that was the first thing within the first half hour i had to sit back and go what's wrong with this and i realized that's what the first problem was so i have to i i've been working on getting past (laughs) expecting that level of writing and i know that sounds really bad but it it just it was it was an instinctive thing. Well, look, kudos to them for achieving the look of an Aaron Sorkin <laughs> show. First of all, um, maybe they had a meeting and said, "Look, let's go for let's go for Aaron Sorkin," and they they got half of it. Well, right? they again, got the look, but I mean, the four shows I named being set in that type of an environment, they're his, and th- that's what you're used to, you know. So yeah, Studio Dog. Oh, geez, Sorry. falling apart. Holy smokes. Um, well, look, I mean. Aaron Sorkin is a once in a generation talent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there's no shame in falling short of Aaron Sorkin. There's still, <laughs> you can still do good things. You can but... still do good things. The problem <clears throat> is, I have a lot of other holes that I'm finding and that, um, and a lot of other complaints. I'm just, I'm going to hope that that sorts itself out. Okay. So I just wanted to put the Sorkin thing out there because if other people are also like off and feeling like, what's going on with mm-hmm. this? that's what it is from the very beginning you just need to turn that sorkin button off and go nope just expect less and then (laughs) you know but i'm right now experiencing quite a bit less and but again i'm holding out hope again with those two producing uh jennifer aniston and reese witherspoon i'm feeling like it has to get somewhere um it's also a little jarring to see jennifer aniston play a role that fits her age and i know that sounds really weird and condescending possibly but you got to think about like all of her roles she's always uh, i don't know how to explain it she's never played a woman who is 50 which she is and a professional and has a child in college and you know what i mean like so it took a little adjusting because i kept finding myself looking at her going why is she trying to be so you know uh it was just i i don't even know the word it was like i had to adjust that that well as well because it was um she's never played this before okay let me take a now, stab at this on top of that the character's also really really horrible so i think that also played into it as well but there's just a little adjusting that's all yeah so there's a couple things that leap to mind first of all um she's always going to have the stigma of friends attached to her where she not was not for me Okay, for most people, okay. right? Um, wow. Which was a comedy. Most of the things you've seen her in since Friends have been comedies. Yeah. A lot of them where she plays opposite, uh, I'm not going to say immature people, but... But that's mostly what she's done. I mean, if you look either yeah. at Sandler or Jason Sudeikis or yes. um, the guy, Charlie Day and those guys in that one. Yeah, you know, Jason Bateman. The bosses, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know she's she's always just it's been younger or um someone with young kids so even then you still think of her as being younger this is the it's just 
she's 50 and it's like it's okay you know and it's like having again having to remind myself okay meredith vieira when she came in this today show like i keep making that comparison Mm -hmm. because i don't you know again she looks fantastic she's not what i think of as 50 so i'm she's seasoned in this the Mm -hmm. the character is seasoned and that's what took me a while to to think of her as the ability of being so seasoned. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do. It's hard it's hard to it, describe, but it, it's it's just it's okay now. But I think also the bigger problem I have is that the character's horrible. So I'm waiting for that character to turn around. I think you have two problems here, and I'm just gonna throw this out. Uh, one may be her character, which you told me right away was Yeah. Was awful and you weren't sure you were gonna stick with it because it was she was so awful right. it was turning you off. Right. Um secondly, uh Anybody who's listened to the show before knows that Jennifer Aniston is not one of your favorites. Right. You actually don't really care for Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> right. So. I feel like I've actually been changing on that, though, the last six well, months. She's been opposite Sandler enough, I would think, that it's. Uh... No, it's not that. It's actually been her that's been <clears throat> changing my mind. Mm. Well, her. So the last couple of times she's been on Ellen, I, I've liked her more because <laughs> she's been more real. Eh, um, and I'm not I'm not saying that she's not real before, but it's just there's an authenticity that I think she's growing into. Uh, and maybe that's it. I don't know. But yeah. I just I yeah, I'm not going to get into all those details about her character and how it is and all that. I want to wait until it's done. So we'll check back in in about six weeks. OK. And we'll see. That's so, fair. OK. Um, OK. So that's all the Apple Plus TV shows I've watched. I there are a lot more. There's an elephant show. There's Oprah's book club show. Um, there's the C show with Jason Momoa, which I can't get past the premise, so I haven't started yet. I mean, there's a whole, everyone's blind on earth, but babies are born and they can see. How do the blind people know the babies can see? That's a, all good question. So I might give it like 15 minutes to see if they answer that question. And if they don't, then I'm probably well, I would watch go. the first episode. Yeah. I, and again, I love Jason Momoa. Can we put him in a comedy, please? Why does he always have Dude, to play what? wearing a fur jacket like i just don't you know dude to be killer in a comedy he would be killer did you see him host us now he's I funny know. like anyway um okay next thing i want to talk about is a comedy special on netflix by seth myers oh yeah yes called lobby baby yeah <laughs> so i watched this this it came out on tuesday i watched it while i was working and it was so freaking hysterical that john came home and i said uh can we watch this you gotta watch this. I was That's like, you gotta watch. Said. I said, it's so funny, and so we did. It's only an hour long. Um, if you love Seth Meyers, it's just perfection. If you don't, I don't. You, then you won't like it. Well, no. But I mean, here's the thing. Seth doesn't? Meyers was well. Okay. Full disclosure. I wasn't a big Seth Meyers fan. I liked him on Weekend Update. Yeah. Right. Um, and it turns out he's so much more than Weekend Update. <laughs> Yeah, and, he's got a whole show yeah, every day. Yeah, well, I've never watched a show because, eh, uh, you know, uh, I'm usually asleep for two hours by the time it comes on, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I was surprised at how much I liked it <laughs> and how much I like him. I mean, he is fantastic. His yes, delivery his is, delivery is, is fantastic. Yeah. And the thing I, I still can't get over is how well-spoken he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I couldn't, it was, it jumped out of me so much about 10 minutes in, he did not misspeak once <laughs> in the whole show. I, it's, the guy's like a machine. Yeah. I mean, it was just flawless delivery after flawless <laughs> delivery. Didn't stumble on any words, didn't misspeak, didn't go, uh, um, uh, or. Right. It was, it was really striking, at least to me. And I, yeah. maybe I'm just paying attention to the wrong things, but. Unlike the whole hour you've listened to for us. Oh, yeah. So we, <laughs> we apologize up front for that. So, you know, if you're right. still here. Uh, That's it, on you. It's on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're obviously used to it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it a lot. It was it was really good. It's super funny. So he talks about it's mainly about him and his wife. Mm-hmm. He tells the two horror stories of the birth of their children, which everyone knows that their second baby was born in a lobby because I, I didn't know that you didn't No. when it happened. It was a huge deal. And of course, he went and he t- talked about it on his monologue and all but, that. You didn't know. I had no clue, which is why towards okay. the end of the show, I went lobby baby. <laughs> 
Okay. Why? Because when you said, okay, there's a special lobby baby, and I'm like, what is that? Okay. Okay. No. So, so yeah, he talks about all that, but it's so much about him and his wife, which is hysterical, to where he even does part of the stand-up as his wife, which mm-hmm. is hysterical. Um it's just it's it, it's funny like everything i'm sure if you wrote it down and and read it it's funny mm-hmm. but it is him oh yeah it's so much him yeah um that just i mean again and i don't think there's anyone who can't relate to what he's talking about because again the the context of husband and wife or partners um and two different personalities having to live together mm-hmm. It's just funny. <clears throat> and so anyone can watch this yeah, you don't have and to be appreciate married. it. You don't have to be in a, re- a romantic relationship. If you have a relationship with anybody else in any kind of context, right. you're going to enjoy it because <laughs> right. it could be that. Right. It could yeah. be. It could be even just your sibling that you have to you know, right. grow up with or whatever. Right. You deal with that. Coworker. Whatever. Yeah. It's just. It's yeah. hysterical. Yeah. So that's. Um, it's called Lobby Baby. <laughs> can you love a lobby baby as much as a hospital baby? <laughs> It turns out you can. <laughs> yeah. Takes a uh, while. Spoiler alert. You can. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Lobby Baby, it's on Netflix. Seth yeah. Meyers. Yeah. Um, I've got two more things to talk about, people. Holy so, stick, stick around. Is it still um, Saturday? Anyway, the next show is The Affair on Showtime. It has ended its run. The series finale was last week. Um, here's the thing. Going into this last season, I didn't think I was going to watch it. Because the only real reason I had started watching the show when it started was because of Pacey, a.k.a. Joshua Jackson, and Ruth Wilson, a.k.a. Alice from <laughs> from uh, Luther. Um, anyway, why are you laughing so much? A.k.a. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you blew on something in my mic. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're back. Um, so anyway, so last year they killed off uh, Allison, Ruth Wilson's character, and uh, Joshua Jackson left at the end of the season, and he said he was not going to be on the season. So I was like, ugh, I don't like the other two characters, Noah and Helen. They annoy me. They're depressing and, and all that. And um, so I didn't think I was going to watch the season. And I came in, and um, there were times I fast forwarded through the show and here's why the brilliance of this show was it started out with these four characters and they would show the first half of the care this the show would be noah's point of view and what that day was from his point of view and then they would go to allison's point of view on the second half and it would be the same day and yet like they would be having a conversation she remembered the conversation completely different than noah did Mm -hmm. she would remember that the the clothes were different than what Noah remembered. Like he always had her dressing sexier than she remembered being dressed, you know, Mm -hmm. those sorts of things. But this season, and they started last season a little bit, they would start to show me these offshoot characters, just like I was talking about people that I could care less about. Again, you gave me these four characters. I don't need to see just because now Helen's dating, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to see what he's doing with his day. That doesn't mm-hmm. matter to me. You, right. I've invested five years in these four characters. Only show me these four characters. So I did fast forward through some of them. Now, the only <laughs> compelling part about this last season was that Allison, Ruth Wilson, and Pacey, Joshua Jackson, who is Cole on this show, they had a kid. And when she was killed, Cole took off with the kid. Um, and they fast forwarded in this season, and we saw Joni grown up. And we saw her... Dealing with life, we saw her investigate her mother's death, which she was told was a suicide. We all knew that she had been uh, killed, or we had assumed she had been killed. And so Joni goes and investigates and finds out that, in fact, she was murdered and all this. So that was really compelling, because actually that plays into the very last season of the show, or the very last episode of the show. Um, And here's what I figured out, that the show was actually brilliant even though I didn't realize it while I was watching it. <clears throat> the okay. show is called The Affair because I'm going to try and do this as quickly as I can. Helen and Noah were married um, and Cole and Allison were married. Noah and Allison met and they had an affair. Mm-hmm. 
And the entire series from that point on has been about that decision. Where in the beginning, you think it's just about the affair. I'm going to watch the affair happen. And, but it's like they went and they had an affair, then they got married. They had a kid that really wasn't theirs and blah, blah, blah. You know, what, how was Helen dealing with it? How was Cole dealing with it? They got married. They did all this. Like, we're watching all this stuff happen. But what I've really realized is that they've actually been showing us this ripple effect of what one decision makes. How everyone's life has completely unfolded or the changes that they had to make to their lives because one person made a decision. And that's not just those four people. It was their children. It was, you know, people they worked with. It was the people then the other spouses married. How everyone's worlds changed because of the one decision, Mm -hmm. which is something we all deal with every day. We all are making decisions that might be impacting other people. This is the first show that's really kind of blown that up in such a way, you know, like Hmm. this and this season, especially because, of course, they were trying to wrap it up between Noah and Helen. So we've really looked into what what these last years have been for all their kids, for them, um, what happened with his career, what happened with her career, you know, all sorts of different things. And again, then going 30 years into the future and seeing Joni and how it affected her life <clears throat> mm-hmm. because of right. Allison getting killed and all this stuff. So it's really been um, kind of brilliant. And, <clears throat> and I, I, I'm, I'm a little sad I didn't figure that out at the beginning of the season because I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Um, but it really took me to the last three episodes. I was like, oh, my God, they're doing it. Like, and they're really doing it well. Um, now, I haven't liked all the characters. Like I said, I still, you know, didn't really like it. But they did bring it full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, they brought it to a place of real closure. And I appreciate that. You know, again, I think it went a little wonky sometimes, but they did a good job job overall. And if people didn't watch the series, I think it's worth going back and watching the show. It mm. was because, again, like I said, in the, the first couple seasons where they were doing that point of view thing, splitting it through the, the show, <clears throat> that was the most brilliant thing I've ever seen done mm-hmm. because it's so you know, you only have your point of view. And so to, to witness such a thing and see the differences in how people see things, it was wonderful. I loved it. Like that was one of the really original things I've ever seen. Yeah. The first time I saw the movie vantage point. Yeah. I had the thought, man, this would, if you could do a series based on this where it's interpersonal and just see the two sides, that would be really good. Probably. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I forgot all about it, but then you talking about this just refreshed my memory that, yeah, I'm not surprised because it hasn't really been done in a series before. Right, right. And they did it really well. Yeah. And then eventually, because the characters weren't interacting with each other as much, mm-hmm. we'd still get half the episode for one character, half the episode for another. But if they didn't interact, yeah, it wasn't really matching up. Well, but that's okay. And I can imagine it makes you appreciate the actors more. Because yeah, it's done really they're well. They're having to do it twice. They're yeah. they're doing it how they do it, and then doing it how somebody else sees them doing right. it, which is uh, right going to be different. Exactly because like like just Ruth Wilson, you know, if Noah's looking at her like when they're starting their affair, like I said, her outfit would be sexier, her hair might be sexier, and the way he's seeing her and she's delivering things is flirty or whatever. But when we see her remembering it. She's like in jeans and a shirt and, mm-hmm. you know, she's not saying anything to lead him on. And you know <clears throat> right, what I mean? So right. it's like, yeah, she's having to act both sides of that. They're they're all having to do that. It definitely is is worthwhile. Was uh was Noah Dominic West? Yes. OK. Yeah. And Helen is uh, Maura Tierney. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. Great cast. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. cast. Sure. Yeah. OK. So that's the affair on Showtime. It's out there. You can watch it. Go back and watch it if you missed it. Well, okay, that was quick. Yeah. Um, And the last thing I want to talk about is the latest uh, season of The Great British Bake Off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Just because we love the show. We've talked about it many times, and uh, the last season did just end. Yep. And David won. Oh, spoiler. Oh, well. Um, And uh, so that this is now on Netflix. This season, they gave it to us. It was airing every Tuesday, I believe, in the UK, and it would come to Netflix every Friday. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to see it 
just a few days after it actually yeah aired yeah no Why that were you laughing oh no i was i was thinking because two seasons in a row the winner was inadvertently announced by somebody it's not by somebody it's on their instagram well okay yeah it's on the show's instagram and i sure. follow them and so i but, see who wins before but it even if in. you didn't there there were a headline because somebody picked up that somebody said somebody let it slip like i think one year uh didn't didn't um prue inadvertently say it oh, somewhere yeah so it, it, not just on their instagram but it got picked up elsewhere okay that then that got announced and by the time it got to the u.s we all knew who won okay um, and then, uh, the holiday specials came on to Netflix mm-hmm, yesterday. Mm-hmm. So we've watched one and the second one we're going to watch today with Jeffrey. Um, yes. so yeah. So I just wanted to talk about it because it is our favorite. And, yeah. Oh, it's um, such a good show. It's such a good show. And this was a great cast of people. We really liked mm-hmm. most of them. Yeah. It didn't, uh, but that happens every year. We always well, love everyone. Usually by the time it gets to three or four or five people left, there's definitely one or two that you're like, that you're usually like, I don't like that person. (laughs) Hopefully this is their week. Um, For me, uh, I, there pretty much starting out, there wasn't anybody I really wanted gone. Right. Um, And I think the person that would have fallen into that category was gone pretty much right away. Yeah. So the last, you know, six or seven shows, I, I was like just enjoying it for all the people. Yeah, you know for sure it's um it's still it's still the best show out there. I mean, it, is. it really it's, is. It's the best competition show because I still watch the repeats on PBS. I still will put it on Netflix, the mm-hmm. old seasons when mm-hmm. I have nothing else to watch. It's just one of those enjoyable things that you know I can yeah. watch, and it's it's a happy watch. You know, I don't have to worry that it's gonna get sad or anything. And yep, I love it. Yep. Aside so, from the ice cream incident. Uh, it's it's been a really yeah non-tension filled show well even that it didn't even so what he's talking about is it was uh i don't even know if that was like seven or eight seasons ago um they were making uh cakes that had ice cream in it and uh um this old lady uh took out one of the guy's ice cream out of the freezer to put her own in and just left it on the counter and didn't tell him about it and so he didn't know. So when he goes to pull out his ice cream, it's been sitting on the counter and it's all melted and he can't do anything with it. The guy threw his stuff in the in the bin and he walked out of the tent, you know, and whatever. So he had nothing to present. So he threw a tiny little English fit, but he did not throw her under the bus. Nothing by American standards. He, yeah. I mean, there would have been a major, major toss up if it had been here and instead... He just said, yeah, I threw it out, whatever. He didn't even say, like, my ice cream sat out. Like, he never even told them on the show why he had nothing to present. You know, it was such a different thing. Now, I will say that old lady never came back to the show. They said that she got sick Mm -hmm. the following week. And they said so she wasn't going to be there that week. And then they never addressed her again. And she never came back. So I definitely think they got rid of her on Mm -hmm. purpose. But um, they didn't address it. Like, they, again, here, they would have shamed the person yeah, to death. Yeah, they did it very quietly. Yeah. And, and she was not missed. No, no. No, because I thought that was a pretty crappy thing to do. It was horrible. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So anyway, so there's that, there's that. But that's as controversial as the show gets. Baker on Baker crime. Yeah. So all their <laughs> seasons are on Netflix. If you haven't watched Great British Bake Off, then, you know... Look, again, you don't have to be in the baking. You don't have to be in anything. It's just a wonderful show. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's that. And that's everything I had to talk about. Oof, I know. We're going. This is going to be the longest show we've ever had. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I don't know where we went off the rails. Because the payoff, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so we're taking, I don't know what's going to happen now. I'm taking the cast <laughs> of Fast and the Furious, and I'm talking about my favorite things that they've ever done. You're, you only have three things to talk about. Is that correct? No, I've got a whole list of things, and they're all different. I You're just confusing the poop out of me. I I understand that, but I don't think that's my problem. I think this was way, your idea, so it was my idea, and I think the way I laid it out, it was fairly self-explanatory. You just, I think, took it a different way and went okay. a different way. So I, go ahead and ex- do what you're. Okay, do. so the cast of the Fast and Furious. My three, I got it down to three: the movies I or series that I love. Okay. Um, Pleasantville. 
yes. with Paul Walker. Yes. Right? Lost the series with Michelle Rodriguez and Moana with Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Of of all the things okay. anybody in the cast has ever done, right. those are my three favorite things. Okay. Did you actually watch Lost? <laughs> I, I don't did. remember you watching. I did. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> That's not at all what I did. If I had to pick my top. You can just just relay what you did. So I went through each person. Well, most the core people. Uh-huh. And I listed off my favorites of each of them. What, which is. That's fine. So for Vin Diesel. I just love the Fast and Furious movies. And Dom is an iconic character. And mm-hmm. so. But sure. I also love him in Boiler Room. Which is one of my favorite movies. Okay. Paul Walker, it's basically everything. Pleasantville, she's all that. Broke Down Palace, The Skulls, Joyride, Noel, Into the Blue. Joyride is probably my favorite of his, other than the Fast and the Furious movies. Okay. Um, Joyride's just, oh, I love it. <clears throat> all right. The Rock, I put Moana, Jumanji, and Hobbs and Shaw. Mm-hmm. Michelle, I put Lost and Blue Crush, which Blue Crush was the first time I ever saw her, and mm. it's a great movie. Sure. Jordana Brewster... I'm not a fan of hers. I don't even really like her in the Fast and Furious movies. But she was in the remake of Dallas. <laughs> so I put that on there. Uh, Tyrese, uh, Transformers, the original, the first movie. You know, he's in there with, um, what's his face? He's in the army side of things. Josh Duhamel. Yeah. Yep. Um, Han, I didn't I didn't have anything else that Han had done. That that's, His name is Sun Kang and... He plays Han in Fast Furious. So I'm just going to stick with Fast Furious for him. Ludacris, I put Fred Claus. Because that DJ scene when Ludacris is the little DJ elf, Mm -hmm. that's my favorite scene of the movie. So, you know. Um, And Jason Statham, I put Spy, Transporter, and Hobbs and Shaw. Okay. So I'm actually a fan of the Fast and Furious franchise. Um, I think they're just fun. So... You know, when we first landed on that, when we were doing our search, I knew it wasn't going to be something for you. Um, But, you know, but I do appreciate what you did. I don't think I, if I had to narrow it down to three, yeah, I don't think I could. So just because I filled out all the, uh, most of the rest of the categories, I'm just going to rip through them. okay. Because I did it how our our normal format. Oh, that would be way too difficult. Okay. Well, I think a lot of, okay. So I think a lot of times it's going to be easier the, but depending on the movie you land on. Anyway, so I do. Act, I did see the Fast and the Furious, the original, the first one, the first one, and yeah. I didn't mind it. I liked it. It's good. Um. So, and what who made it for me was Paul Walker. Oh yeah, of course. <clears throat> so I put that as one of the ones I like. Um, another movie I like. Um, and this is maybe a little bit obscure. Is Keeping Up with the Joneses with Gal Gadot. Um. You're including her as one of the cast members? Yeah, because she was in... She was in one of them. I think she was listed as being in two of them. She was in two? Yeah. Anyway, okay. so... Yeah. Um, And the other one, so Cole Hauser was in a couple of these, too. God, was he? Yeah, and the movie Paparazzi with him, I, I really liked his character. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, the one I didn't like was Transformers Dark of the Moon with Tyrese. Did you ever see that? I did. I started I haven't it. Seen it. I started it. I thought, okay, it can't be as bad as I'm hearing, and it was. Uh, okay. I got maybe 15 minutes in. And, <laughs> you know, I'm just not a yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> secretly love Eva Mendes and Hitch. Okay. Um, I I don't. I think I I think that fell in my secretly love because God, I forgot I'm not she was a, in Too Fast Too Furious, right? She was in the second one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a huge Will Smith fan, and that's a Will Smith movie. Um, but that one was cool. And mostly yeah, the scenes with Kev- Kevin James and, <laughs> and uh, the rich woman. <laughs> um, I don't have anything that's on my list and nothing I'm embarrassed I haven't seen. So Except that's, for all the Fast and Furious movies? <laughs> um, I'm going to get you to watch Hobbs and Shaw. Possibly. Well, so here's the thing. I like Dwayne Johnson. I like Jason Statham. It's so Elba. so that that one has a chance. It's just that's what the eighth one because I think it's they're coming out with nine. It's not technically. It's it's a Fast and Furious presents. It's not technically one of the. Oh, Fast and Furious. Okay, so they didn't have to get so so. It's not like eighth in a franchise where they just they're now so crazy. They've no. It's I think completely the, outlandish. It's the ninth <clears throat> ninth one comes out next week next yeah, year, and that's yeah. gonna Charlize Theron is coming back. She was in the last one, and Helen Mirren's gonna be in it. 
and uh, everyone else except for Paul. It is harder to watch without him. Mm-hmm. These the last one. It's entertaining, you know. It's still just as you know crazy and wonderful and entertaining, but it is harder to watch without him. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I don't. I I think there's a slated for a tenth as well. I I just don't know. I mean, they make so much people. money. Why wouldn't you? That's the whole thing. Is you can't just stop. It makes so much money. Well, you can. No, if you're, if you're, if you're universal, you you go. We're going to keep making well, money. Okay, so I understand that as a business case, but then don't expect me to, to love these movies because you're just making them for the for the haul, which is fine. But they're still entertaining. Again, people would not go watch them if they still weren't as good. Yes, peace. I get that. And I, I, I learned long ago that not everything I don't like, other people yeah. don't like. They love it, No one's, which is look, fine. They don't get nominated for anything. No one's expecting anything out of them except for a rip-roaring good time. Yeah. <laughs> Put that on the poster. That that's uh <laughs> that may be the title of this episode. <laughs> that might be the title of the tenth one. Fast and the Furious Ten, a rip roaring good time. Just a rip roaring good time. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay, we went way over today. So sorry if you're still with us. Thank you. Um and yeah, Disney Plus comes out on Tuesday, so I won't be seeing Sun for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I ever see Sun. But uh, there's going to be tons and tons and tons and tons to talk about. Mm -hmm. So be ready for that. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. Until then, I'll be watching my stories. Thanks, everybody. Okay, bye.